let's talk about our um, chapter five information here. So chapter five in our moving forward here is kind of like what last week was with our two parts at the end of with chapter three and chapter four of our um, of our exercise, you know, psychology, sport and exercise psychology information. So chapter five is part one of what we would say developing physical activity interventions. All right. So let's kind of flow through this and, and see what this takes us through. All right. So when we look at everything here um, with PA, remember PA meaning physical activity, um, the overview of everything here. Um, when you talk about an intervention, Interventions meaning, you know, a way that we can try to help somebody or to help a group of people make change. Um, the thing about interventions, though, is that they do not directly change behavior. There are ways that you can influence behavior. There are ways that you can actually make the change, but there's usually some spin to that, all right? So just remember that interventions, so physical activity interventions, do not necessarily mean that it's going to change the behavior. It's just you're changing the the moment, the modality, whatever it might be that you're looking at. And I think that sometimes we, we think that it's just going to instantly make that change for that person and it clicks. And that's not always the case. All right. Interventions modify one or more factors that influence exercise, which in turn can increase exercise. And that's exactly what I was just saying is that, you know, you're, you're changing some aspect of what you're trying to do. So it doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean that person's behavior is necessarily changing, although that's what the outcome we want to have happen is. But there are factors that are being modified that then change the perception of exercise for a person. And when that perception changes, when that feeling changes, when that emotion changes, then what ends up happening is that the exercise that you talk about increases. All right. Now, chapter three and four, we talked more about the models and theories of that. So now we're going to kind of put it to use. OK, because these interventions are basically they're 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 basically in and of itself working within those theories, okay? So here's what we're, you know, going to drive down into here is the, you know, the intervention design. And here's the first part. Exercise interventions are often criticized for being based on what we call it seemed like a good idea at the time principle. Now, uh, you know, if you want to try to pronounce that out, is logia, you know, but that, that's just the acronym for it seemed like a good idea, a good idea at the time. All right. Now, to me, <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my head around that one, but interventions should not just be, oh, yeah, it seemed fine for that moment, you know, so let's try it. No, 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 no. There needs to be a better way that we can actually provide the interventions for people so that we can change their behaviors later by changing factors like we just talked about before. Okay. Um, so like it says here, there's a four stage process that we can use here. And stage one and two is more about the assessment component of everything. And then stage four is about that evaluation of the particular intervention. So what you're going to do is, you know, provide these assessments um, of, again, the factors that we're looking to, to modify. And then those factors will hopefully influence our change in physical activity of some way. Um, and then that will drive the intervention to be able to achieve some sort of success later on. All right. And then stage four of that four stage process is the evaluation or looking back and saying, okay, did that work? It's not, it was, it seemed like a good idea, good idea at the time. Well, no, that's not what we're looking at here. What we're looking at from that perspective is, did we do everything the right way? Did we give that person the best, you know, we could of them? Did we provide them a good mechanism for modification? You know, and that's really what we're looking for. And if that's the case and it, and we did, well, then that means that we can see a change in their behavior. If not, we need to go back and change something to help them move forward. So the, the four stage process and here you go. Stage one is like it says here, you're trying to understand the behaviors. All right. You know, who is your target audience? What are those behaviors of that target audience? And then what you're going to want to do is in that second step is to, like it says there, conduct a behavioral analysis and diagnosis. Now, be very careful when you, when you hear those terms, because again, we, we don't diagnose. We're not a psychologist. We're not a psychiatrist. 
all right? We don't diagnose aspects of, of these behavior changes. But what we're saying here is we're, you know, we're, you know, we're looking at, every, we're analyzing everything correctly, and then we're looking to see what it is that's going on. You know, diagnosis is a really, you know, it's a really strong word in the, in the land of education, in the land of any professional field, because diagnosis usually comes from, you know, a, a, you know, a medical professional or something like that in our line of work. So with diagnosis, think about, you know, you're providing this analysis, you're looking to see what's going on, and then you're coming up with some sort of idea or conceptualization in your head about what's going on in terms of exercise, okay? Now, again, we're not diagnosing medical conditions or diseases or anything like that, so we can't take that for, you know, for that way, all right? So after that, you know, so we're trying to understand the behavior. All right, cool. That's great and all, but ultimately, what are, what are we trying to do in terms of, you know, what, what are we trying to do to try to set them up for the best possible way and what identify, um, what I, intervention options do we have out there? And that's really what we need to start looking into, okay? That's really where it comes down into, you know, the ste step three, which is select intervention function. So what are you going to do, okay? Um, and then you're going to select policy categories, all right? So at that point there, um, when, you, when you're coming up with those, with that step four option, it really comes down to, okay, well, what is it that we're getting ourselves into? Um, you know, what is it that we're looking for in terms of, um, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, so what, you know, what sometimes can be said is, you know, what are stakeholders using, you know, um, what are they using? What are things that they're trying to work with? What are some of the functions? What are things that you're trying to work with so that you can figure out what is best to help this person in terms of behavioral change? Okay. Stage three. We start looking at stage three. There, you know, then you're going to select a change technique and then select modes of delivery. So now we're actually getting into it. You know, identify content and implement implementation options. I can't talk this morning. Um, and so those are those. You know, the first six steps. So identify the options and then identify what options you have for that, and then present it. And then afterwards, stage four would be the evaluation component. All right. So with stage one, here you go, you know, understanding the behaviors, understand what, phys you know, specific physical activity behaviors you're trying to change. What is, are they working out at all? Are they working out one day a week, two days a week? Are they doing only cardio? Are they one of those people who is really afraid of resistance training? You, you never know what you're going to run into with that. Okay. And then like it says, you know, identify the theoretical constructs and influences that you're going to use to increase their physical activity behaviors. And that's really critical. So you have to understand the whole process of everything before you can implement anything because you need to know what's going on, what needs to change, and how are you going to really, you know, what are different ways that you're going to go about doing that. Okay. And that becomes really critical. Um, when it comes to your target population, all right, we're talking, you know, select the target behavior. There you go. If they were only, if they were working out zero times or one time or two times a week, maybe we want to select the target behavior like exercising three times a week. All right. We don't want to worry, you know, so that's where it becomes a little crazy because now we're talking about the behavior, not about the outcome of losing weight. Okay. That's where it becomes critical. Okay. And then you got to go with all the W's here, you know, the, like the who, what, why, when, where, you know, what, when, where, how often, and with whom. Because don't forget, you know, with whom it may, you know, people may not be able to afford a personal trainer. People may not be able to, uh, you know, be able to train, uh, be able to train with a strength coach or go to large group. You know, CrossFit's really expensive. Um, group exercise classing classes have been getting very, very expensive. So we have to look at it from that perspective of with whom, how often, you know, we, all that comes into play. All right. So, you know, the next part of that stage one is that step two of conducting a behavioral analysis diagnosis. So, you know, um, you need to get this understanding of capability, motivation, and opportunity, okay? And really, you need all three, okay? Capability. Are they capable of achieving some sort of movement? What is their motivation level? And is there opportunity? Now, Opportunity sometimes is challenging because maybe a person, 
you know, has a lot of things going against them. The, they they don't have a, a gym in a, in a recent, in a decent distance. Maybe they don't have the finances. Maybe they don't have, maybe, you know, just they are unable to because of job and, and childcare restraints, who knows? But as long as they have all three of those present, then we know that they should and can do physical activity as needed. So we're looking to see and understand better, again, capability, motivation, opportunity, okay? So capability is, you know, if you want to work with weight training, you know, do you know how to use weight training equipment, okay? And do you have the appropriate skill and strength? Well, skill and strength, if your beginner is low, but your capability to, you know, maybe you know how to use the equipment, you're just not very strong or as skilled, well, you can still use it. The opportunity part of everything, you know, when we say, you know, is there a weight or do you have access to weights? If you're going to be having a home gym, well, what if you don't have weights? Well, you can do a lot of body weight things, but again, we're trying to weight train. So again, do we have the opportunity? Is there a social group that, is there a neighbor that might have some similar equipment that you can work with? And then the motivation is, are you going to be able to see the outcomes? All right. Are you seeing that there's benefits? Are you seeing that, um, you want to train, you know, so that you can be able to eventually make that transition. All right. So what we're saying here is that with capability, motivation, and opportunity, those three things have an ultimate ability to be able to ch uh, change the behavior that's needed. So it says calm B, capability, opportunity, motivation, calm, can change B, which is behavior. And so that's your behavior analysis part of everything. All right. So with Calm B, you know, one of the things I think we have a tendency not to do, and I'm a victim of this as well when it comes to certain things, is I don't really list down my barriers. Or I know other people, and even people I've worked with before, we may have not looked too deeply into barriers before. And I think that that sometimes can be very hurtful because of the fact that, you know, understanding what are the things that can get in your way that will, will you know, basically prevent you from changing those behaviors or completing those behaviors, all right? And then with, you know, are the, what are those barriers? And then what are the facilitators? Things that can help you, okay? And so by categorizing them, you can kind of get a better idea as to that calm part of everything, the capability, opportunity, motivation, all right? So if you categorize your behaviors and your facilitators, then ultimately you're setting yourself up for better success to be able to make that behavioral change, all right? Now, when we look here, you know, here's like an exemplar, like it says here, developing a bike to work intervention. All right, so if we looked at everything in a bigger grand scheme of things, this is the image that we have. You can see here is, you know, you know with physical capabilities, psychological capabilities, physical opportunities, reflection uh, or reflective motivation, automatic motivation, all of these things are there. It says here, the target population must have the skill and stamina to ride a bike to and from work. Well, if you've never ridden a bike, just say your job's 10 miles away and you've never ridden your bike 10 miles, you're going to be setting yourself up for, for potential failure, you know? So you got to be able to get yourself up to that level, all right? And like it says here, is there a need for change, all right? So it says here, no change needed. The employees indicated they have the skill to ride the bike. So if that's the case, then okay, then they can do it, all right? And then we go we go down through. So I can, you guys can all take a look at that in your own stuff, but you know, and, and pause it here if you need to and just kind of look at it, but it gives you, you know, is there a need for change? Is there not a need for change based on the opportunities and capabilities and motivations, the COM, C-O-M. So again, there's capabilities, there's the opportunity, physical opportunity, and then here you have your motivation. So that's where our COM, and then the B, like it says here, the intervention, the behavioral diagnosis is where we're like, oh, okay, What's going on? The intervention must target psychological capabilities and automatic motivations because it's indicating that there is a need for a change. Okay, that's how we can do it in our own way. So you can take this and almost relay this to anything that you want to change. You know, what are your capabilities, your opportunities, and your motivations? And then say, okay, well, that doesn't need to be changed, but this does. So what can we do? And what is the diagnosis from there? Again, we're not diagnosing conditions, we're just diagnosing the situation. All right. So basically, you know, when we're looking at that bike to work thing, it's what needs to happen for physical activity to occur and does anything need to change? And that's really the more important factors that we have to look at. Those are the two 
really underlying questions that we have to say. All right, so with the, phys you know, what needs to happen and does anything need to change? Well, with physical capabilities, they need skill and stamina. Okay, we talked about that and that was all through this. The psychological, what needs to happen? They must know how to ride a bike. They need to know how, to, how and like it says here, the change that's needed is they need to know the safest and fastest routes. So then psychologically, they don't have to think about where they got to go. They just automatically go that way. And then they can be more apt to be a better rider because they're more aware of their surroundings, more so of where they have to go. Okay, that's where psychological can come into play. With physical opportunities, the part of the com B, the O is the opportunity. Um, they must have access to a bike and a helmet and they have time to actual work. So if they have all that, then there's no change. Reflective, they must see the benefit. All right, so do, are they really seeing that there is really a reason for them doing this? Okay, and if they do, then they realize that they're going to feel better by biking to work. Well, then there's no change needed. And then lastly, the mo automatic motivation. Okay. What needs to happen? They must have a positive emotional reaction, desire, and uh, impulse and or habit, okay? So here's where it comes into play. They explain to you they are afraid to cycle to work and they do not do it habitually. Well, there needs to be a change there. So we need to figure out emotionally what's the emotional reaction. We need to figure out emotionally what's going on. What is there a true desire? Do they really want to do it? Is it, you know, is there impulse or habit? We need to break down each one of those parts of it and say, you know what, where is it the most that this person needs that change that we can then reflect on it and figure out how to help them with that process, okay? So, you know, again, with, you know, the behavior diagnosis, we already talked about it in that, that diagram, but here it is again, the intervention must target psychological. So we go back to psychological. All right, they need to know the safest and fastest route. And automatic motivation, meaning that they are afraid to get, you know, so they need to know their safest and fastest route and they need to figure out how to not become afraid of cycling to work and they need to make sure that it become, and then they need to not be afraid of it becoming, you know, or not being able to make it become a habit, okay? And that's where we need to figure out as the professional within, within exercise land how to help them with that, okay? So, you know, there are other things that we can think about. We can find more elaborate ways to analyze the behavior. Um, we can find other factors that might need to be. So this con B is very simplistic, but to me, sometimes overanalyzing can be, you know, a little bit, you know, as aggressive as it may be. Sometimes it may not be as beneficial, okay? But we definitely still want to find those factors that are influencing that behavior. So even if we stick with the con B model, you know, that, you know, again, going back to, you know, everything that we just talked about with in terms of the capabilities, you know, the opportunities and the motivations, you know, what is it that, you know, what's going on? Like really ultimately, and that's why we're able to do that when we do that behavioral diagnosis, because we can see which aspects, it's the mental component of it. And then their part of it too was the automatic part of the behavior of it becoming second nature. Okay. So, but again, when it comes to frameworks, we can always go a little bit deeper if we need to. All right. So now that we've, you know, taken care of, so if we go back to where our stage one is, we need to understand the behavior. So we took that COM B approach and we're trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. So now we're going into that stage two of identifying intervention options. Okay. So what are we looking at? You know, what, what do we need to consider? You know, what do we need to figure out and to put into this, you know, into this intervention? Okay. So if we look at it here, like step three is the functions of the intervention. Like it says here, the activities that will change capability, opportunity, and motivate the calm. All right. And then which policy categories to use? What approaches will be used by stakeholders to support the implementation? Used by stakeholders. Who are the people that have stake in what's going on? Okay. And that's typically the people that are right, readily involved in everything. All right. So, when we look at some certain things here, all right, we, we actually have what's called a behavioral change wheel. And then the diagram is right here on the next slide, okay? So with this, it was developed, like it says here, to, to help interventionists use a better, more systematic way of trying to find different interventions that can be used correctly for each person, all right? 
So when we look at it, it's like, okay, well, there's our physical, our social, our, you know, there's a physical and the social, excuse me, parts of the opportunity. There's the reflective and the automatic parts of our motivation. And then there's the physical and the psychological parts of our capability. All those break down into a bigger range of things in terms of, you know, this, again, this wheel of education, persuasion, you know, helping persuade, you know, coercion. Um, oh, incentivization, train, I couldn't read it sideways, training, enablement, modeling, and then environmental restructuring, and then restrictions. And then all of those fall into fiscal measures, guidelines, environmental and social planning, you know, marketing, legislation. So, uh, you know, what are we looking at in terms of this as we spin this? to see where we're at, you know, where does that guide us now? You know, because there's so many options, this was based off of a bunch of different theories and this is how they kind of came up with it. But our intervention functions are based off of those sources of behavior. And then the like it says policy categories that comes from those interventions. Okay. So like it says there, there's the, the three layers is the inner, which is the stage one, which is steps one and two. The middle is stage uh, of the middle layer, which is the red, all right, is stage two, which is step three, and then the outer, which is the gray, is again st stage two, but it's step four, okay. And that's really where you know again getting down to stage stage one and two, steps one and two, and then three and four. Well, we already talked about this right here in this area here in the middle. We know the green is what we just talked about in terms of our. Um, in, in terms of our com B, okay? And then we'll talk about more about the steps three and four with the red and then the gray outers, okay? So with step three, like it says here, selecting intervention functions. So there's nine functions and I kind of hit on them already and they're all right there, all right? And with those, we need to figure out what's best for them. Okay, do we need to educate them? Do we need some restructuring of the environment? Well, if we go back and look at that person who was riding on the bike, we know that the behavioral diagnosis was psychological and automatic motivation. So environmental restructuring probably is not going to be there because they know the route that they need to take to get to work. Okay. Um, so looking you know, at everything from this perspective, we have to figure out, oh, well, what is it that we're looking for? So with education, you know, we're talking about how do we increase everybody's knowledge? How do we inform them? Okay. Persuasion is how do we communicate with these individuals so that we can, you know, kind of get some positive and negative feelings from them to figure out where we're at. All right. Um, incentivization. So if you give an incentive, just, you know, just understand, you know, you're giving, um, a reward. So like it says here, you know, incentivization is more about the creating, um, you know, like an expectation for a reward. Okay. Training is giving skill. All right. Coercion is creating an expectation of punishment or cost. Okay. So if you're going to coerce somebody, just understand that you're giving them some sort of expectation for, okay, is there, um, you know, if you give if you give them an ultimatum at the end, really, it's like okay. If you don't do this, you have to do this. So, like, if you want to be involved in a weight loss challenge, know that you could potentially win. And if you don't win, you will end up giving that that money goes to charity or something like that. Okay, restriction. Basically, what you're doing is you're you're reducing the opportunity that you have to be able to to, to use something. Okay, um, enablement. You know, it's more about um, it's reducing barriers and increasing means. Okay, um, so basically, you're going beyond education, you're going beyond training, you're going beyond environmental restructuring. All right, so that you can be able to give them a little to reduce the the barriers, so that they can increase their opportunity to get better at something. So. You know, usually when we talk about enablers, you know, like you know, like an enabling mom, what you're thinking about is a mom who's kind of just, you know, when they enable, what they're what they're doing is they're they're basically giving that kid a crutch, all right, and and you know all of that. But here, an example of enablement would be 
if you want to have students to get more encouragement, you want them to engage more in some sort of exercise, well then have them download an app so that like there's more incentivization so that they can, you know, feel like that that app is really working. Okay? That you're enabling them to do more. Modeling is basically, you know, imitating or, you know, you know, what's the other word I'm looking for? Imitating or, you know, kind of like copying another person in a good way okay and then lastly the environmental restructuring is just changing the the social context or the physical context of everything what is it really that your surroundings are for okay and those are the nine areas that we want to pay attention to okay so when we look at everything here if we were to blow this up on the grand scheme of things understand that when we look at you know, there's your capabilities, your opportunities, and your motivations. The intervention functions are all of those in the red that we were talking about that we just went over all the definitions for, all right, the center, the center part of that wheel. So what we're saying is that with psychological capabilities, we have education, training, modeling, environmental restructuring, and enablement, and that will help us to provide a better, in, in, you know, intervention for a person, all right? So if we're struggling in a certain area, so again... If we go back to our person who wants to ride their bike, the intervention must target their psychological capabilities, all right? So our psychological capabilities and their automatic motivations. So we're saying here that automatic motivations, there's a lot. Training, persuasion, incentivization, coercion, and environmental restructuring, modeling and enablement. Whereas psychological capabilities, we talked about those, you know, there's a few carryovers in that where it's education, training, modeling, environmental restructuring, and then enablement as well. So you can see that some intervention strategies hold, you know, the, of the calm part of everything. They might have similar ways of going about doing things. Automatic, what we're saying here is there's no education in there because, well, it's automatic. So you should be able to know what it is. So that's why sometimes skill work is more important for that. Okay. So again... When we're coming up with the best decisions within our step three of selecting our intervention strategies, what we're saying is, are, are, are we following along with all of these factors right here? You know, is something affordable? If it's out of their wheelhouse of money, then no. Then if it's not affordable, then technically it's not practical for them. But is it practical? Is, it, is, are, is your intervention going to be, you know, 30 weeks long when we could do the same thing within eight weeks and it's just as effective? And there's the effective part of everything. Is it really doing what you're hoping it's going to do? Is it going to give you the outcomes you need? Is it acceptable? So ethical, moral, is it correct? You know, is it acceptable for what, or is it acceptable, meaning like it's accepting from that person? There's no side effects and it's equitable for, meaning it's equal for the target populations. And that's really, really critical for us. All right. So then we, we move out of that into step four, which is, again, policy categories, all right? When we talk about policy categories, we are more apt to be working, you know, like it says, approaches that are more apt to be with working with approaches that can be used by stakeholders to support or enact interventions, okay? So, again, we want to make sure that we're using everything correctly, you know, and there's your seven policies. Well, again, working with everything here, we want to make sure that we're taking care of everything correctly. So stage, so again, communication and marketing, you know, what are you using for media? Are you using social media, are you using electronic, telephone, you know, email, whatever, print, it doesn't matter. Guidelines, well, what is it that, you know, creating documents, you know, what is it that you're mandating, okay? What are you following for rules? Um... And, you know, fiscal measures, what we're talking about there is we're using the tax system to reduce or increase financial costs, okay? Regulation, you know, are we, are we really establishing a set rules, you know, guidelines, principles so that you can act in the right manner? Um, are we then, you know, is there legislation where we're actually making or changing laws? Um, environmental or social planning, you know, uh, for, are we... Designing or controlling, you know, physical environments. And then lastly, with service provision, that's delivering a specific service, okay? So 
like uh, delivering a service are are the, is the community delivering a service of having bike paths you know you know is there legislation for bike paths are there regulations for bike paths and that's why making uh you know riding a bike we hope it's safer now than it ever was before because there is more legislation and regulation and guidelines that tell us that we can ride a bike safely and i'm just going off the example that we were talking about before so we need to make sure that you know selecting the right policy category can help us again change that intervention okay now if we go by what we were talking about before the red circle so again i'm going to go really back i'm going to blow that up really quick and then go back to the wheel we talked about the next set of everything was these strategies in the middle well then on the outside is your um on the outside is your policy categories and then the inside is your intervention functions well where do those align and let's figure that out so if we go here if we see that education well communication guidelines regulations legislation service provisions all those relate to education so you can see if we go back a little bit education is involved in things like psychological capabilities or reflective motivation okay so you can see where we started low and we've built it up so we've gone from these the calm which is the capabilities opportunities motivations to then saying okay well how do we take those and create a better intervention and how are we going to follow through with those policies okay what is it that we can implement and you know and have that we can then use to then be able to start changing the behavior okay and then lastly what in our part of our four stage process we have the stage three which is again state steps five and six which will then be this is going to be more about chapter six so we're going to you know this is where we would stop and this is why it's part one and part two is because we want you to break it up so that you can see oh okay there's a four stage process but Okay, let's break down that step, the stages one and two more clearly so you can understand how to work through everything. All right. So although it sounds confusing in a way, you just need to think about it's, it's a step-by-step -step process to go from what is it that's going on with this person and then how do we start developing the need to change? Okay. How do we start developing that need to, to create a different behavior within a person? Now, remember, going right back to it, interventions don't change behaviors. But if you looked at everything, you can see how going from that calm B approach to the intervention styles to the policy changes, how behaviors can sometimes start becoming um, you know, changed in some way, but more effective in, in a way as well. Okay. So... That's chapter five, you know, follow that up with chapter six immediately because it's going to flow right from one to the other. And then we'll talk to you soon. So have a great day.